Hello friends, my name is Doug and this is Dale and we're a third style garage working on a 66 Beetle convertible. Um, thanks for following along. We are working on the front of the car. This is part of our six easy steps to get the body ready for paint. Tonight we hope to work on the weather stripping that goes around the trunk and then shifting to the fenders. Uh, we have one original, one uh, aftermarket fender they don't match each other and we're gonna figure out how to make them work with this body real well so let's dive into this and see how it goes Okay, so when we learned a lot doing the rear apron, uh, what we did there is the, the curl part of it, as opposed to the flange, goes inside, um, and then the flange part goes out, and then when you put the rubber gasket in, that covers it up. Um, this is a little tricky to weld because there's really small holes in there. They're eighth inch diameter holes, there's really not much of a flange to drill a much larger hole, um, but that works if you're careful. So we measured the very middle. We know we want that to line up with the center of the car. We're then gonna wrap this around and we get to the spot where the apron ends and the front corner starts, we will have a gap. So we will cut this one off, drill a hole at the end, plug weld right there, and then our next piece will start here like such and wrap around up to the top. And this is pretty close to about the right length. Um, the first couple I think are the most difficult because we wanna get that curve started. And once we get two of the plug welds in, if it's welded decently strong, then we'll be able to start uh, carefully by hand bending this up the edge and we'll bend it up, weld one, bend a little farther, hold it in place, weld the next one. It will just keep going up all the way. But I would love to find a way to start this curve a little bit so we're not welding it. So I'm gonna mess around with, I've got an old metal trash can that uh, I use in the shop and I'm just gonna real slowly and carefully see if I can start to bend this around just a little bit. Got a little bit of a smile to it. Um, obviously, I don't want to kink it or crush it or, um, uh, you know, I don't wanna bend it this way. I want it to be this way. So I'm just being real gentle and careful as we go. Uh, there might be better ways to do this. I'm not sure. Um, I guess there's probably always multiple ways to do things. Um, if you're doing this at home, do be aware that the, the flange wants to bend more where the hole is because that's a weak spot in it. Um, so just something to be a little bit aware of. Um, but I'm gonna keep massaging this off camera a little bit. There's probably a jig that you could make that would, so you can see that I've got a, I don't know if I would call it a kink here, but the bend happened right by the hole. So I need to try to real carefully massage this so it's an even curl, even though the rubber gasket's gonna cover the majority of it. So we'll get back to it. We'll see, uh, we'll show you the progress of how it goes. So one of the things we learned is, and I talked about it kinking where the holes are. Um, you look really close right there. It started to crack a little bit because it's stretched there. So trying to get the curve to go between the holes, putting a vice grip on each side really tight, and then pushing down with a vice grip on the radius allows us to get a curve kind of between the vice grips. So um, now we'll just take this and uh, 
We'll test fit it on the back of the car. We probably have a long ways to go yet, but you can see that we're getting closer. So we'll keep working on it. We are getting close to having this where we think we want it. And nothing ever goes exactly perfect. So we traced the, the black line you can see here is the hood. And if you notice, the black line matches the end of the quarter there, goes around, and then it misses significantly here. Like it should be, it's off about a half an inch. Um, that means the hood has to get shifted about a quarter inch that way, which I think gets aligned in the uh, hinges up there. The other piece that we're struggling with is where does this channel go up and down? Um, looking at the grind marks, it seems like the channel should tuck right up into this uh, valley here or up against this ridge or this bump. But if we know the tip of the hood is this low and we were to put the seal this high, it's the, the seal is going to miss the lip on the hood. Let me try to show you what I mean here. The lip of the hood has a half inch flange on this edge. And so that seal needs to match up with a half inch flange. This line is the edge of the hood. This line is the inside edge of that flange. So we want our seal to be kind of, the, the gasket sits out here. So we want the edge of the seal to be right about there where my fingernail is. So if we were to run this, we were to run this, what do you call it, channel, all the way up against here, it would miss that flange on the hood. I hope that makes sense. It's hard to describe. I think what we're going to do is we're going to cheat this channel low so that it effectively seals against the flange on the inside of the hood, as opposed to having it higher, which might look a little bit more factory correct when the hood is open at a car show. Um, that's the choice Dale's gonna make. I think we're working on it. So um, this is gonna come back off. We're gonna clean it, put weld through primer on both pieces, um, and then we're gonna start welding it in. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna pause. We're frustrated. <laughs> and uh, we, sorry, let me flip the camera around. Remember how I was talking about how the channel seemed like it should have been touched, bumped, or uh, like pushed up against this ridge here, but instead we needed it down here to match the hood. We were using a mock-up of the weather seal from the engine compartment in the back, assuming that that's the same weather strip that goes in the front. And after a little bit of research online, it might not be the same. And if we put the channel right here, and the weather strip is significantly longer, it's gonna hang out the bottom, which would be a huge bummer. Unfortunately, we don't have that weather strip here right now. It's back at Dale's house, which means we can't get it till next week, which means we gotta wait. And it's frustrating because we wanted to wrap this job up tonight so we can move on to the fenders, but we're gonna try to be disciplined and be patient and wait, which is not what we wanted to do. <laughs> so the hood is off. We've cleaned it with uh, brake clean, put a coat of primer, a uh, weld through primer on there and on the channel that's on the rag. We welded up a couple pinholes in the hole that was in the hood that was left after my weld job. And we are gonna move on to the fenders, which we had hoped to get to later this evening, but we're gonna get started on earlier than we thought. So we're working on fenders. We put this fender on, started with bolts and the arch of it. 
they lined up fairly well um, and then got to the front and these two were way off and the bottom of the fender hung way down compared to the apron so we took all those bolts off took these two and put them in and now our line down here is better we're not bad across the front our corner here lines up pretty good but these are way off and I don't know, maybe three eighths of an inch, something like that, Dale. Yeah, um, and the fender just doesn't want to go into the right spot in a way that feels like makes it happy. So we're scratching our head on this uh, to figure this out. This fender we haven't spent much time on yet. Looks a little better. Um, Originally, we thought we were going to need to trim some off of that, but that's not looking as far off as it did as well. This is the one that we're focused on now. We seems wrong to have if two bolts don't fit, but like eight of them do. And it seems likely that the two bolts are wrong, especially because those are in the area that we did a lot of work to. But when we put all those in, this doesn't match up at all. So now we're debating about do we put these two in and then drill new holes for all of those. We don't know the answer. I wish you could tell us. <laughs> all right, friends, things are feeling a little better. So the all of the bolts are in. We like how this corner lines up and the fender looks pretty good. So we've had something go good for the night uh, we actually ended up not having to move that bolt hole at all these three we had to grind the hole a little bit so we'll need to do some welding to fix um, those bolt holes up in the fender and then so i think that'll be the next step the step after that we need to rework this edge here you can see that this hangs down lower than this. And we have a gap here that's about a quarter inch. Um, so we will either need to massage this over or cut it and fill it. Um, and we'll probably need to hammer and dolly this underneath more to line up with this height and to line up with this radius. But I think we'll do that after we finish with the rest of the fender then we're on to the headlight bucket. So I feel like we're finally accomplishing something tonight, moving forward again. That feels good. Time to get back at it. So we took the fender back off and uh, we are, it's the first time, how long since all the bolts have been in? Um, well, I've owned it for over 10 years and I'm guessing for the last 10, it's had, you know, broken fender bolts and stuff like that. So it's probably not had all nine fender bolts on for at least 20 years, maybe 30 or 40. How many bolts were holding it on while you had it um, driving it? About half of that. So maybe four or five on every fender. Okay. okay, so while we had it in the car with, with the alignment of the fender, the way we really like it, we drew circles around the washers. So you can see where we need the washers and the holes to be in order to get it. So like on this one, we need to fill in maybe about that much of the hole. So there's still, so there's something for the washer to catch. On this one, it's an even larger gap that needs to be filled. This one, not so much. So we're gonna work on uh, figuring out the best way to fill those up and redo it. And uh, we'll try a couple different things and we'll tell you what worked. We, if we try something that fails miserably, we'll just delete it. <laughs> we are making progress. We, you can see this one's particularly bad um, or at least has a lot to be filled in. So I've got a copper backing plate that I just clamped in place. And then I am starting by welding on the edge 
to the good steel until I have a small bead all the way around the edge and just keep working back and forth and back and forth until it's filled in. And I think that that's actually, it's going pretty quickly. Um, and I think that might be a little faster than welding a whole patch in. When I'm done, it ends up looking kind of like such, and then we will we'll clean it up. Should be a little smoother on the other side where the uh, copper backing plate is. So uh, we're gonna keep going and filling in some of these monstrous holes. <laughs> <Ta -da! laughs> All right, let's get back to it. So here's what it looks like. Dale's getting cleaned up. Nice work, Dale. Thank you. Um, you know, it's obvious that it's welded up, but uh, it will be much stronger this way. You know, the material where the weld is is thicker than the original stock, so that will help stiffen it up a little bit. It's still gonna flex to the car. Uh, but once that's painted and covered by a fender nut and washer, nobody will know the difference. We are probably gonna have to go back in with a die grinder and just round that out a touch. I welded it a little smaller rather than larger, knowing that it's all Dale's effort to grind it, not mine. <laughs> there you go. So, good work, Dale, keep it going.